All right, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for another Green Tea Room episode. Um, today has been crazy. The month has been crazy thus far. And I was just like, you know what? I want to hear from everyone. So thank you guys for coming through. We're doing an earlier episode because I really want to get some of our peoples overseas to call in and let us know what's going on in their neck of the woods. It's been a lot going on. Um, I told you guys September was going to be a crazy month. We're only nine days into September, and so much stuff has happened, not only here in America, but also overseas. Um, we woke up this morning. There was a video going viral of a particular state in Nigeria, and they're saying that in order for you to go to worship and go to the bank and just do normal day-to-day activities, you have to be vaccinated. And I've been saying this for a while, that this is what was going to come down the pipeline. And of course, you know, I was tripping, I'm reaching. And like I said, it's it's always okay when it's something that you're not, you know, involved in. Like, let's say they say, oh, well, you can't go bowling unless you're vaccinated. Well, I don't bowl, so I don't care. But as soon as it's something that people really enjoy and need, when it's something more serious, now people are really starting to wake up like something is not right. When you're saying that people can't even go to the banks, my money is in the bank. It's gotten so bad, excuse me, in Australia that they're telling people that you can't even go back to your home. Like, let's say if you were out of town, visiting another state, um, another place in Australia, certain cities will not let you go back into the city, into your homes until you are vaccinated. There's a, a man whose video is going viral. He's from Australia. I posted in the Discord earlier. It's a lot of things going on, and people are very, very bothered by what they're seeing. So I have my guest host here. I have Rejoice, and I also have uh, Lady J. She's also on the line as well. So if you ladies want to go ahead and unmute yourselves. Hey can you guys hear me okay? I'm out yeah, we can. on my back porch. Is it too loud? No, you sound perfect. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Hey, Rejoice. Hey, everyone. So, Lady J, what are some of the things that you've noticed? Because it's a lot of stuff that's just been coming down the pipeline in the past yeah. few hours. And I know with you, you know, you're vaccinated because you have to travel internationally and things mm -hmm. like that. And you just recently heard that in the Netherlands, now they want you, even if you're vaccinated, you have your vaccine passport and everything. They want you to quarantine for 14 yeah. days. It's like they're moving the goalposts. Because remember, before you had to quarantine when you weren't vaccinated. But isn't the point of the vaccination where you shouldn't have to deal with all this other rigmarole? Well, well, remember we were talking in one of the other green rooms back, I think, in late July, early August, where I think you had another one of your subscribers talking from the Netherlands, and they were talking about the level of how they were ranking coronavirus. You remember that conversation? Mm -hmm. You happen to remember that? And I was like, man, I wonder how it's going to be when I get ready to go. Well, my situation is I'm going into the Netherlands at the end of the month. And as of September 6th, they were like, OK, you can you had to show proof of vaccination. They were letting Americans in. Americans are still listed as a safe country. But there's a caveat. You have to have a negative coronavirus test. And you must quarantine for 10 days. However, you can come out of your quarantine in five if you pay for your coronavirus test and you test negative. They're very strict with the rules. And apparently the Netherlands are not letting Germans in and Hungarians. They changed the policy like that with them, too. And I'm like, well, damn, like, should I try to wait longer? Should I? I mean, I don't have the luxury of time on my hands. And then talking to my friends in Australia, they're like we're you know we can't really move about no know? they literally cannot leave five kilometers from their homes i yeah. mean this is this is really disturbing because to me at this point it's no longer about the vaccine i think that's what people need to understand we need to mm. stop this whole device of your vax i'm not i'm better you're better like it, it, it's no longer about the vaccine at this point Somebody just made a really interesting comment um, in the in the green room. They said, T, um, please talk about the military being forced to be vaxxed or court-martialed. People are walking mm. off the job. In a minute, oh. we're about to be a vulnerable country if they don't stop this foolishness. We it's, already it's are the vulnerable truth. country. We, we are, yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah. We already are because the, the fact is, is that our numbers are ticking up higher. You know, mm -hmm. and and you and I were talking earlier briefly about how people would rather take ivermectin. 
<laughs> a, horse, a horse dewormer. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, people. Sometimes too much information is not good for people. Yeah. That's just scaring me right now. Mm-hmm. But I also wanted to say the fact that I understand the need to show proof of vaccination. I get it. There are some people who choose not to vaccinate because they can't vaccinate. And those, you should not put people in a category. I thought that we were fighting for women's reproductive rights, my body, my right. Mm. So why is it that you're telling, you're saying, oh, we're for women's rights and their right Mm -hmm. to kill or not kill their baby. But then you're telling this person here that they must vaccinate and you're going to do this and that another to them make it make sense to me but I also understand the public need for safety over is overreaching than the individual right to someone's right to choose the life of their child I get that but also we understand that history tells us that when we do things like that it gets dark very quick and yeah. that is what scares me now let's talk about history, okay? Because after all, this is a conspiracy board. So if you guys remember back in 2008, and it's starting to go viral because a lot of things, hindsight is 2020. So if you guys remember, David Icke was saying a lot of this stuff way back then, that this is a lot of the things that's going to be pushed and there has to be, you know, problem, reaction, solution. And that's what we're slowly seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this clip that's viral right now on social media. You guys go ahead and listen to this real quick here. If you want, which is what they, what they do want, a world government, a world central bank, a world army, an amalgamation of NATO and the U- UN uh, peacekeeping operation, a world uh, currency, electronic, no cash, and a microchip population, then what you've got to do, and this is the way they, they work, a process I call problem, reaction, solution, you've got to keep creating the problems get the people um, to react, Mm -hmm. do something in fear and outrage, all of what's happening, what they're going to do about it, and then they, who've covertly created the problem, offer the solutions to the problems they've created, which is the constant centralization of power. That's what all the solutions are. And we're seeing such a wonderful example now with what's happening in the financial industry. And if we don't wake up, we're going to live in a global fascist dictatorship um, within five to ten years. Now, he said that in 2008, and it's Mm -hmm. very scary what's going on now. Right now, in 2021, the New World Order is trending on Twitter. It's literally been trending all morning, okay? And people are really upset and frustrated because it's like they're not even hiding it anymore. You know how we Mm -hmm. talk about, you know, Feridian slips and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but not one, but two of the, the speakers in Australia, let the same thing slip. And at that point, it's really disturbing a lot of people's spirits because it's like, okay, you guys are basically showing us what you guys are trying to do, you know, to create this whole one system. The fact that every single country is all of a sudden on board. We can't get all these countries to be on board to stop, you know, child trafficking, sex trafficking, uh, Nigeria got the nerve to be trying to push this whole COVID vaccine situation <laughs> and y'all didn't give a damn about SARS. Y'all nope, literally watched y'all young people get killed last year on 10 10 2020, try to lie about it, claimed only two people got shot, but we all watched DJ Switch's live stream. So much chaos has been going on in Nigeria, and this is what y'all are worried about. Right now, you got people struggling, um, having to live off of generators because electricity is just shit out there right now. But this is what you're worried about, having people be vaccinated so they can go to the bank. You know, so it's just like it's so much going on and it's very frustrating. And right now people are tired and they are livid. And that hashtag, I mean, I just been in there all morning sipping tea. (laughs) You know, honestly, nothing surprises me anymore at this point. I think that my mother, my ex-mother-in-law said it best. She's like, COVID has just broke open all the stupid. Like it really has. All, you know what I'm saying? Like all the flights of fantasies, all the crazy shit that you possibly could not imagine is all coming to fruition. And a lot of us are just sitting here like, hello, we see you, but you're gonna keep doing that shit anyway, and you think we're not gonna say nothing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're gonna try to shut me yep. up. No, I think not. And 
that's what bothers me. That's what's disconcerting for me. I understand that the government has a responsibility. I understand also that our governments can't tell us everything because not everybody's uh, a fair player. I get it. But while at the same time we do have apparatuses of governments that are doing the best for people, those members of our government exist. Those are the same that are doing the shit on the back end that are causing us the dissension or the deep state, whatever people want to call it. I don't know. But we have to begin to look past all of this to understand that some of this is really a distraction. And that's kind of how I feel like this is. I feel like it's a distraction. Yeah, it's definitely a distraction for what's to come. You know, it's it's so much going on that at this point, it's like, what is the real situation? What's really being handled behind the scenes? Um, because again, like I always say, you have to watch what's going on in other countries. They will always start with Europe first because technically they're seen as a more docile people. They're not as rah rah as Americans. So they'll always try and start over there when they start to push certain things. Hence why Australia, is, I mean, it, and that's what you consider a quote unquote first world country. And the mm-hmm. fact that they're just shut down and can't do anything. You know, unless they're vaccinated and, and, and they're showing their passports and even truckers are not being affected there, as well as, you know, truckers here in America. We found out yesterday from the trucking community in the discord, um, they're telling people they can't if they won't even allow you to unload your load if you don't have a vaccine passport as a trucker. Meanwhile, in America, we are dealing with a supply chain shortage. Like right now, I can't even get grass. I talked about that. And, you know, it's funny, (laughs) but I can't even get grass from my front and backyard because of the shortage on grass sod. Sod is a shortage. Why? Because of the droughts, you know, where they grow it. There's been a lot of droughts, water issues. So a lot of us, even in this community, we don't even have grass, let alone we're talking about food. When we're going to the grocery store, there's no food. A lot of the items that we're used to buying, they're either really high price. There's a shortage. You can only get one carton of eggs. So there's so much coming down the pipeline. And I just wish people would understand this as opposed to falling into this whole divisive you know, situation. Because you have a lot of folks right now, including doctors and nurses, who are also walking off on the job or being forcibly fired because they're not willing to take the vaccine. Like they said, um, with the military, they're telling you if you don't take it, you'll be court-martialed. People are walking off. So where does this leave everyone? You know, it leaves us vulnerable. Because now if you go to the hospital, if there's something wrong with you, if there's not enough staff to take care of you because half of them feel like I'm not fooling with this vaccine, where are we at? You know, and that's the part that's just really disturbing So I want to quickly play that video that's going viral on social media, and then we're going to start taking some calls. Um, I want to play the the video here of um, what they're saying in Australia. So give me just a second. Will exposure sites be put back in place, especially with reopening and people going back to pubs and stuff? Because our exposure sites still, will they be put back in place to be listed once we are reopening? Because they're not at the moment. Um, We will be looking at what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. And yes, it will be pubs and clubs and other things if we have a positive case there. Our response may be differently, different if we know that people are fully vaccinated. So we're working through a number of those um, issues, but we will have to reflect and learn. It is. We've got to accept that this is the new world order. We've got to accept that this is the new world order. We've got to accept that this is the new world order. So, again, years ago, um, you know, conspiracy theorists were clowned and talked down to and, and said that you guys are reaching. There's no such thing as a new world order. And But now you have people in power, in parliament, in positions of leadership there in Australia just basically saying it. And some of them are trying to walk it back and say, well, I didn't mean to say that. Well, I'm not, you know, I don't believe them because, again, Two different people said the same thing, same day. So it's really disturbing. So let's go ahead and um, take on some um, some calls here. Sharon, you're coming to the stage. Hi. Can you hear Hello? me? Yes, we can hear you. How are you? Hi, I'm all right. Thank you. I'm uh, Khaleesi Emmy from the Discord. Okay, yes. I remember you said you wanted to call in. I'm so glad you were able to get in. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, 
So I just kind of wanted to kind of give my take and perspective on things um, as a Nigerian that also um, kind of tends to live in the UK quite a lot as well. Currently, mm-hmm. I have moved back to Nigeria now. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of things going on in the news and just in general. And if you were, if you were kind of looking at Nigeria from the perspective of the news, <laughs> you wouldn't definitely not be getting a picture of what's actually going on down here because it's just so vastly difficult, sorry, different to what is actually going on that it, it's just insane. So first mm-hmm. of all, I just want to let everyone know that life is going on as normal in Nigeria, okay? Like, we don't really have social distancing like that. Most places that require masks, bars, clubs, shops, restaurants, everything's open, right? Mm-hmm. This is across majority of the state. I don't really know of any states where there's any massive restrictions going on and no curfews. Literally everything is fine because our COVID cases aren't really that high and aren't really that serious. And you don't, you don't really hear of any deaths. Do you know what I mean? Right. So for us to now hear in Edo State, I'm like, I'm confused because Edo State is not Lagos. It's not Abuja. Edo State is not a state that has an international airport. It does not have a direct port of international entry. Why of all states, would Edo mm-hmm. State just randomly be like, okay, so um, you can't go to church, you can't go to mass, you can't go to the bank without a vaccine passport? Like, what? Wow. Yeah, that don't make sense. That sounded crazy when I heard about that. And, and that's what other Nigerians Nigeria. are saying. Yeah, that's what other Nigerians are saying. Like, Edo State is a lot smaller. And why are they being the mouthpiece for all of Nigeria all of a sudden? Do you know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, I don't want to come on here looking crazy. Let me do my research before I come on here. And I found out that mm-hmm. another state, Ondo State, which is also a very small state, is also, it's part of like, um, it's like one of the majority Yoruba states, is also mandating COVID vaccines. Hello? Neither of these states have that much like commercial importance or they don't really have that much international importance. It's just random. It's like picking the two, like one of the two least popular. I'm so sorry if that's where you're from. I am so sorry. But do you know what I mean? Like you don't right. hear about that. They'd be that. like yeah. saying, they'd be like saying Iowa is a representative of all of America. Like, who knows <laughs> in Iowa? Not, no shade towards No, no shade, shade, but <laughs> yeah. Iowa doesn't speak for America. They're mainly gonna go to places like New York, LA, Texas, you Florida. know, big big. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Okay. We saw th- we thought this was gonna come from Lagos because Lagos is basically right. like the heart, like literally, it is the mm. the cap. I would say the capital of Nigeria, just not officially, right? Because everything right. happens in Lagos. Right. Every like no, it, everything happens in Lagos. Lagos is where most people who are coming in internationally land, both on land borders and you know at the ports as well. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I really thought I I thought this was gonna come from Lagos. So it's just a bit of a shock. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like (laughs) Nigeria is such a deeply, like, religious country. I don't think a lot of people realize how religious this country is. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.